The salmon is a big important uh, part of the of the Yurok way of life. Small groups of fish kills are starting again and I'm I hear people talking about how they're afraid that they're, it's going to be 2002 all over again and sometimes history does repeat itself. In 2002, uh, a lot of folks believe that if they released water from the Trinity, that could have pre prevented it. And um, uh, the government decided not to give the go-ahead for that, and there was a fish kill. Uh, we are looking at repeating the same exact pattern this time around. This last weekend when I was at the Salmon River, I saw that um, well, the smell was terrible and that they looked weird to me, like the gills and everything. I tried not to look at it because it made me feel really sad seeing it. So when I saw it, it made me like, em not empty, but angry and broke my heart seeing that happening. Looking at it compared to when I was a little kid, that uh, 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 river looked so sad and looked so sick. And it uh, uh, really, really hurts my insides because that, all those good memories I had when I was a little kid, looking at that river, it was a beautiful river. You know, just an emerald green, beautiful river. And, you know, now it's a neon green, toxic river with all this stuff floating in it, you know. Uh, it's pretty sad, and I think that it's this year, I think there's going to be a fish kill that's going to happen. We went swimming this weekend. You know, the first thing we saw was a salmon bellied up in the river, and it was just so sad that we, you know, we fight so hard. We're trying to create all this attention, but yet yeah, it's not enough. And we need to, you know, we need to work harder to make people realize that this is continuing to happen. A few nights ago, a man from Hoopa was on TV saying they're already dying upriver. They're expecting another fish kill like 2002. I was very mad because the river was so hot and I felt that, that somebody could have intervened, the interior could have intervened and actually cooled down our river so that that wouldn't have happened because all the signs were there. I mean, when the river reached the temperature of like 74 degrees and people were begging for them to release water, it was like nobody heard, you know, and they didn't hear until all the fish started dying. Yeah, I do remember the 2002 fish kill. I was there. Uh, we started getting some reports of some dead fish, not unusual. Then we got some more reports that maybe there was 100 dead fish. Two days later, we had 50, 60, 70,000 dead fish. Uh, it's kind of hard to think about. And it was the worst days of my career. I thought that was terrible and that the government let the fish down. I cried because the fish were coming home. The river was full of bacteria. All their relatives were laying on the bank dead. It wasn't good. Some of the kids were, were catching fish by hand. It was like, wow, this is kind of sad. I mean, this is not quite right when you just go out and catch a fish. It's pretty healthy, right? And then as it got worse, then we realized that, oh no, you know, we're having a, a fish kill. 
and then it made us feel as a dance person and a traditional person is we felt maybe that was doing something wrong you know why, or otherwise why would this be happening to us but as the scientists later on you know let us all know that it wasn't something that we were doing wrong you know it could have been prevented although we pray to the creator for all things but sometimes we got to pray to the man to the people especially the people that can let more water down the river and those type things, you know. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I was like, am I looking and seeing what I think I'm seeing? I'm seeing like dead fish everywhere. And then it was just so stinky and, you know, just overwhelming with like um, unbelievable grief. Like how could all these fish just be dead? You know, what are we gonna do? That day, I remember that day. From the time that we began to hear about fish were dying on the Klamath River, um, it was within a couple of days that we had 60 to 80,000 dead fish. And when I took a trip up the river, there were fish on both sides of the river for 20 miles, starting at the Pacific Ocean, that were three or four deep, um, laying on the banks of both sides. There were hundreds of fish in the eddies that were dead, and there were thousands of fish that were floating down the river at the time. What causes fish kill is what we call ick, it's a disease. Uh, that that spreads with, from fish to fish, you know, and, and that when fish, when the water is warm, fish congregate together in pools of cold water, you know, like at Blue Creek, at the mouth of Blue Creek there, they call it Blue Hole, and fish uh, uh, school together in, in large numbers, and, and that when the water is warm and they carry this ick disease, that it could spread very easily, and, and that is what one of the reasons that we have big fish kills. Wow, I wish I could say that it's not going to happen this year, but that river's 78 degrees already. That river's already green, it's already warm, fish are already dying. And then once the gill rot gets there, it just spreads like wildfire. It's like, you know, when you have a goldfish and it gets ick, it just spreads. You know, so if they release water today, you know, they might save a lot, but I don't know. I'm just not sure about that. I would say for them to take a really hard look about the risk of not providing the water and instead sending the water to other water users versus the risk of not providing the water and taking their chances with another catastrophic fish kill like happened in 2002. I don't know what we have to lose by trying to release them by releasing water uh, if, if if that's the only thing that we that we can do to prevent it at this point that's what we should do absolutely this is 100 percent preventable if we actually did something more than just sit around and like some people just sit around and whine about it and because they're not going to get their fish but some people are taking action. The, us people that were here, put here, we have a responsibility to this place so, um, in order to uh, prevent things damaging our way of life and things like that. We need to, to come together as a people and uh, we need to, uh, you know, educate our people in this, this process, you know, and, uh, you know, try to get our voices out there and, and make it count. And I wish I could be part of those people and I wish I had enough guts and stuff to join them in trying to stop this because we as a whole community need fish. It brings us together, it helps feed us, it, it's pretty much like the life source of our ancestors. And if we don't keep going that same thing as they did, we're just going to lose our tradition because fish is our tradition. If there was another fish kill this year, it would be a big part of my life and my family's life taken away from us. Part of me would feel empty and the other parts would probably be depressed almost because I feel happy when I fish or even when I just come down here, I just feel happy. If a fish kill happened, I would feel pretty empty seeing all those dead fish just floating there. You know, this is happening, this is going to happen again, and we need to let people know and remind people that this affects all of us. Right now I think agriculture has the biggest voice in Congress, and I don't think that we are loud enough. 
that there's enough of us protesting and participating. It's time to let more water into the river. There's still more time to do the right thing, release more water into our rivers. Give us more water, you know, for our, for our fish. It's time to put more water in the river.